men's basketball this afternoon. It is not against Monmouth, which was uh, supposed to be on the schedule today. Uh, today, the uh, Ripon College Red Hawks will be hosting the Lawrence University Vikings. This was a game that was postponed on Wednesday due to, co due to pro co COVID protocol. We'll get it through there. And now they have rescheduled it for this afternoon. Teams coming on in. Ripon 8-5 and five on the season 4-0 in the Midwest Conference. Lawrence 6-8 and eight overall and 3-2 and two in the Midwest Conference. Uh, last time Red Hawks have been on the court, been a few weeks, uh, it seems like. And uh, they're back to full strength with everybody, I think, as well, too. Uh, so it should be a good one, Marty. Yeah. And uh, I'm, I'm most interested to see the, the final season of this young man for Lawrence in uh, Brad Sindel. Uh, All-American kind of guy. Talked about it uh, earlier. And uh, if he's on, they can just about compete with anybody. Absolutely. We'll find out a little bit more. Uh, Marty had a chance to talk to head coach Ryan Kane. We'll hear from him coming up. You're watching Ripon College Red Hawk basketball on Midwest Conference Television and the Ripon Channel. Just outside the Doc Weiske Memorial Gymnasium, I'm Marty Ernser. I'm here with the head coach for the Ripon Red Hawks men's program. And we're just a few minutes away from tip off. Coach, I always like to thank you for your time. <laughs> You're welcome. Okay. I appreciate your time as well. Uh huh. Uh, you've uh, let's do a really brief synopsis of the season so far. You've uh, played some quality competition, and you, you lost a nail biter overtime to Lacrosse, a ranked team. You go down to Wheaton, uh, a ranked team, Wheaton College. You lose a close one there. You get a signature win with Whitewater. Mm -hmm. uh, you stubbed your toe at the Holiday uh, Winter Classic over in Oshkosh. Mm -hmm. And then uh, you did something to Grinnell when you j jumped back into conference play. I wasn't at the game. I looked it up. I saw the score. Mm -hmm. You held Grinnell to 28% shooting, 27% shooting from the threes. You guys shot 40 42% in mm -hmm. the game. I've never seen a Grinnell team be held to 70 points. What happened? Yeah, well, you know, with the Grinnell game, um, it was a, a little bit of a, you know, part of their game plan, to be honest. You know, I think, you know, in the 10 years now that we've been here, it's the first time they've ever um, not came with the full court press. Um, you know, they, they kind of just sat back a little bit in the zone a little bit. You know, I, I uh -huh. think they felt, you know, it was a, a, I think a true sign of respect. They, they do this on occasion with teams they feel like, if they do genuinely run with the, uh, the, it's probably not a good matchup for him. Okay. So he, you know, he kind of changed it up. He ran a couple of different zones against us. It was really good. It kept us off of our rhythm. Um, he would press some possessions and then lay off some. So as a result, there were, you know, fewer possessions. And, and I think they weren't ready for it either. I think offensively, I think that helped, you know, with their maybe percentage it, from the floor as well. Maybe it took them out of their typical rhythm because they still launched 58 threes. Yeah, I mean, they're going to yeah. get them up. Yeah, they're going to get them up uh, regardless. <laughs> Uh, but they just didn't fall, and you know, and sometimes that's a product of what you're doing, and sometimes that's you know they miss some open ones too. So, um, but we did a good job on the glass. We did a good job finishing. I thought Jalen Mahone played a great game. David oh. gave us great minutes um, as far as his ability to finish and rebound against that thing. You know, being being six nine, so it helped. Yeah. Um, so here we are today, arch rival. We had, our, we had our travel doubleheader last night on their side of town with Ripon and Berlin. Mm. And so here we are with the Lawrence Vikings. They're a little below 500. They're three and two in conference with the wins over Beloit, Knox, and Illinois College, both losses to Grinnell. Uh, they, so they come in here, but I, I saw what they did. I mean, I don't like that term quality loss, but I don't know how else to spell it. They lose by six to UW Oshkosh and they lose in overtime to Eau Claire. Um, what do you s expect from them today here? Yeah, well, it, what I expect is the best player in the conference to show up. And, and, and whenever you've got a great player like Brad Sindel, um, it's going to give you a great opportunity to win. And so, uh, you know, we'll have to make sure that, you know, we play great defensively against him, not just, you know, the, the individual matchup, um, but certainly collectively as a whole. Um, you know, and we got to make sure that we're doing what we do well, which is, you know, defend, rebound, um, get good high quality percentage or high percentage high quality shots. Um, via the paint and inside out. And, and if we can do that, you know, I, I think we'll be in a good position. But, you know, they run great offense. They're very dynamic offensively. they got lots of guys who can uh, score it. They, they run a great motion. Um, you know, their coach comes from uh, a great program at UW Oshkosh. So, you know, this is his first year, and uh, he's got those guys playing really well. Excellent. I would like to finish up talking about some players. 
Uh, talk to me about Keese, Brady, and Bartle. Sounds like a law firm. Yeah, it does. But those three juniors mm -hmm. stand out in my firm, in my mind. Yeah, you know, it's always great. You got to have a bench mob. You know, you got to have some guys that can give you some quality minutes up the bench. You know, I think, you know, Braden Teese has been just solid for us all year long. You know, he's someone who's very reliable. Um, you know, he can score it in the low post when he takes his chances. He can actually make a perimeter jump shot when he needs to. But um, he's a very smart kid, comes from a great high school program. He's got yeah. great continuity with the other guys in the team. Um, he's someone that you can just trust. You know, and, and, and uh, Je Justin Bartle, uh, you know, is the same. You know, again, a kid who you can trust. He's been there before for us. He, you know, when he plays with great energy, um, he gives us extra possessions. And those things are all key for us. And, you know, Jack's emergence last year was great. Um, you know, he's struggled a little bit shooting the ball this year, I think, than what he's mm -hmm. accustomed to in the games. He's, yep. he's still making them in practice. And I'm confident that, you know, when the opportunity comes, you know, he'll give us some big shots when we need him to. Okay. I want to thank you for that. Um, we're going to be getting back upstairs for the introduction of the starting lineups. I'm Marty Ernster, along with head coach and athletic director Ryan Kane of Ripon College. And welcome back to Johnson Gillespie Courts as we get sent for the Red Hawks versus the Vikings Midwest Conference Men's College Basketball. Thoughts on the game, Marty? What do you uh, think the Red Hawks need to do? You had a little insight this week as you fed the team on Monday. Yeah, right. Uh, we talked more about the Alabama uh, Georgia, Georgia game. Georgia, yeah. Georgia football game. But I tell you what, if Rippon just plays Rippon ball, right, which, which is take good shots, take balanced shots, play that in your face defense. Uh, and, you know, and, and win the battle of the boards, Rippon comes away with a W. Absolutely. So we're going to step away for just a moment for the playing of our national anthem. We'll be back with the tip-off and the starting lineups in just a matter of moments. Stick around. Midwest Conference men's basketball on the Rippon Channel and Midwest Conference television. Welcome back to the Wilmore Center. Let's take a look at the starting lineups first for the Lawrence University and Vikings. They'll start number three, Brad Sandell, the six foot senior guard from Pacific Grove, California. Number 10, Elliot Young, the six foot four inch junior from Grand Rapids, Michigan. Number 11, Jake Fisher, the five foot 11 inch sophomore from Lake Forest, Illinois. Number 33, Adnan Saranchik, the six foot five inch sophomore from Gurney, Illinois. And number 35, Matthew Kaniskoff, the six foot four inch sophomore from Lake Zurich, Illinois. Under the head coaching direction of Casey Korn in his first season, assistant coaches Kevin Shield and Jeff Simon, those are the Lawrence University Vikings. Now look at your starting lineup for the Ripon College Red Hawks. Number one, a six foot junior guard from St. Cloud, Wisconsin, Ryan Steffes. Number 13, a six foot junior guard from Fond du Lac, guard Drew Jorgensen. Number 22, a five foot 10 inch sophomore from Chicago, Illinois, Dominic, Dominic Gabati. Number 42, the six foot nine inch junior from Appleton, David DeVolk. And number 50, 
is six foot four inch junior from Wapan, Owen Tooney. Under the head coaching direction of Ryan Kane in his 10th season, assistant coaches Mamadou Diallo and Ty Katz. Those are the Ripon College Redhawks. Marty, thoughts before we get set? Taking a look, a little bit of a different look in the uh, starting lineup today. Well, there you go, right there. So that's a surprise to me. We didn't talk about that down in the uh, coaches' discussion. So um, I'm most intrigued with uh, his starting five today. So, um, but I'm, I'll tell you what, the matchup today, right there, number one on defense, that'll be Ryan Steffes trying to take on Brad Sundell and limit his touches, I suppose, and try to limit the damage that Sundell's capable of doing. He always puts Coach Kane, Steffes, on their best defensive player, sometimes even if he's a forward. So Galati gets to start again. This is his third game, I believe, in which he's got to start. Drew was out for a couple of games. Yeah. And uh, but uh, and, go and, ahead. The, and the thing that stands out with Galati when he when I saw him coming off the bench early in the year, he's very strong with the ball. His in the half court offense, he just doesn't turn it over. He got into a little bit of some foul trouble in that game against Grinnell early. So he, he, he picked up two fouls pretty quick and, and saw a little bit of less, less minutes because of that in that. But uh, uh, overall played a pretty good game. So Red Hawks in the home white jerseys this afternoon with the red trim and red numbers. And Lawrence in the road blues with the silver numbers and white trim. Glad to have you along. Along with our camera operator and executive producer today, Cole Gregney, Martin Ernser. I'm Jason Mans. Was so glad to have you along for Midwest Conference basketball. I'm just happy we're doing a game. I thought we weren't going to be out able to do one because of the Monmouth cancellation due to the uh, COVID protocol. If so. we took a marker board for the Midwest Conference men's and women's uh, originally scheduled games and how they've been playing out, it's crazy. Uh, one other comment. Having a guy like uh, Drew Jorgensen in a game like this, I think will be big because when he sets his feet and he's square and he's behind that three-point line, that really can uh, do very well to uh, shrink that floor for Lawrence. DeVolk will jump for the Red Hawks and number 10, Elliot Young, to jump for the Vikings. Left to right on your TV screen, the Red Hawks will move and they will be controlled. Dom with the basketball across the timeline. Man-to-man -man defense played by the Vikings. Tooney on the right wing, now will find Steffes. He'll look to find Owen down, one bounce on the floor, posts up, gets through the traffic, lays it up and good. Wow, nice little shift to the left hand on that. Early 2-0 lead here up for the Red Hawks. Vikings now will set up shop at the top between the wheels. Fisher, he'll work against Jorgensen, a hand back. Over to Sandell. Sandell will take it high to the window, lay it up off the glass. That won't go. Rebound pulled out of there on the ground. Devalk will swing it out and find Steffes on the run. Steffes breaks towards through the basket, puts up the shot block from behind. Nice job there. Wow. Saranchik. Yeah, Saranchik. Beautiful from behind. Three-pointer around the way is up and get a miss off the rim this time. Kaznikov. Duvalk on the dribble handoff to Jorgensen. Back over to the right side, Steffes. Now the fine Dominic. Galati gets the screen from Tooney. Looks down, throws back to Owen. Post up three, left-handed shot. Good. And that's Galati, very strong with the ball. Doesn't turn it over. 5-0 lead here. Just about 90 seconds gone in the first half. The Vikings will back out. Fisher. Over to the left edge, here comes Young. He'll go through, that one's picked out of there. Jorgensen ahead to Steffes. Steffes on the dribble back, looking for DeVolk. He'll feed it down low this time. Got an open lane if he wants to take the pressure in. He'll spin up, fake one way, stay out of it, throw back. Galati, three good. Wow, ripping off to a very good start. Coach Kane couldn't ask for a better start. 8-0 lead here for the Hawks. Sandell with the carry on the left side. He'll spin move through the lane. 15-foot line. No, backs it out instead. Here comes the reload coming through. Left edge now. Over to Fisher. Dribbles through the legs. Working against Jorgensen. Packs it down. Underneath. Good dribble control, but Tui got a hand on it. It's going to go out of bounds off of him. I think another advantage having watching this now is with, with DeVolk out there, I think you have to give the edge for post play to the Red Hawks for sure. 
Saranchik just got a little bit, I think, confused that he had a little bit of open space in front of him and, and wasn't able to hold on to it too, and he got a hand on that. Good fake there time from Sendell with one on the shot. He'll bury it. Makes it 8-2 with 17-32. Good dribble relocate by Sendell to be able to make get open for that jump shot. Devalk with the pick inside. He'll go up underneath. No, no footer is good. 10-2 lead. That's that advantage I was talking about where he's got it over the 6-5 uh, counterpart down low. Fisher with the dribble between the wheels at the top of the key. He'll go to get the screen. Hand back over to Sandell. Sandell averaging 22 points per ball game. Good dribble through the legs on Young, and now they'll kick back, and the Red Hawks on good defense. Yeah. Nine on the shot clock again. Here comes Sundell through it. It's got a kick back out. Four on the shot clock, and the release is good. Barry wow. by number 10, e Elliot Young. Sundell almost walks with it. Instead, he could see assist on a deep three. 10-5 lead for the Hawks inside to DeVolk. Playing the post very well right now. Wow, like walking in the park. Once DeVolk gets it down low, he's three for three. Across the timeline comes Sundell and the rest of the Vikings. Through the middle, good coast, scoop under up. Ooh, couldn't finish, it would have been nice, but it was a good move. <laughs> it was a great move. Ran the gauntlet. Steph is kicked back over Galati, another three, buries it. That was like he was shooting in his driveway. Yeah, Coach Corton wants a uh, timeout to talk a little bit about that. Red Hawks had a big jump right here, 15-5, and they're playing well, especially down in the post. Yeah, and they're not turning the ball over. That's, that's big, you know? And DeVolk is taking advantage of the size difference. And I just can't get over the difference from DeVolk of, I wasn't going to say a year ago, but basically two years ago to this year. His maturation, his footwork, his aggressiveness, what, with his willingness to attack the rim, it wasn't there two years ago. And, uh, boy, it's, it's fun to have if you're a Red Hawks fan. It's a great weapon to have. Well, Coach Korn's got to come up with some kind of defense that's going to stop from DeVolk making points under the basket. Oh, and also stopping Galati from oh. making three behind the arc. Oh, yeah. I think the big thing is it starts with the entry pass. If you can't match up in size and height with DeVolk, then make that pass to DeVolk tougher. Timeout taken, and now the Vikings will inbound 16-10, remaining in the first half. Red Hawks lead 15-5. Jalen Mahone's in. Walk up for the Vikings. Also, Luke Meinholz checking in for the Hawks. Super freshman from Oconomowoc. New players in. Brandon Danowski for Lawrence. Talk about shooting from the driveway. Sundown with that three-point basket, making it 15-8. Galani to Devol. And back to Jalen. Meinholz. And around the perimeter, the Red Hawks will work it. Steffes will feed down. DeVault post up, spin, left-handed, finish good. Oh, looks over his left shoulder to the baseline, comes back with a baby hook. Six points for DeVault, six points for Galani. Red Hawks with a 17-8 lead here. Kazanoff is up, too good. Nice little stop and pop. Built more like a inside linebacker. Kaznikov with the basket for the Vikings. 17-10, Rippin. Galati off balance at the 14-foot mark and gets it. Wow. Vikings back up. We'll go to the right side. Sundell step back on the three from 20 feet. Plus and good. 19-13. Just trading buckets the last few times now. Yeah. Ryan Steff is talking to the coach on the way back after that long three. Rippin shooting 88% so far, 7 of 8. Steffes on the edge, he'll bring it in. There's the shot put up, got it. Hey, does anybody play defense here? My goodness, great shooting by both clubs right now. 21-13. By the way, LU shooting 5 of 8 for 63%. Here's another shot on the way, 3 is good. That time, 30. Kyle Lewitz. Yeah. Lewitz, the sophomore from Lamont, Illinois, six foot five inch. 21 16, 14 02 on the clock. Galani inside this time. Meinholz will touch it back to DeVolk. He'll go up. Basket, no good, but he'll get fouled. Beautiful job, once again, footwork by David DeVolk. 
because if you don't square up on that and you're surrounded, they may not give you the whistle, but he attacked the rim and, and deserves to get to the free throw line. So Duvall will go to the charity, charity stripe for two shots. First one is good, Duvall, a 62% free throw shooter on the year. Jorgensen's gonna come back in. Tooney's gonna come in for Duvall. Gelati couldn't have asked for a better start for Coach Kane. Julian DeGuzman checking in for LU. 23-16, Red Hawks lead as DeVault will come out. Yeah, I don't think he missed. No, I think he's at least four for four, huh? Well, he's uh, three for three on the stats that I have right now, and then two for two at the free throw line, so. Okay, I think the stats are wrong. <laughs> Could be. Kicked Here we off go. there on this the turnover. Mine holds will finish, spin it himself, lay it up, two no good, but rebound it comes out. Steph is over to the right side. Tip. That one's tipped. Mahone picks it up underneath. Jalen will spin it back out, work around, soft touch, get it to go. Way to stick with it. Wow. Way to be patient with the ball down low and not panic. Great move. 25-16, Hawks lead this one. 13 remaining in the first half. Picked off, Mahone got a hand on it. This time, Meinhold coming this. up. And the finish <laughs> with the flush. Yeah, I might be a freshman. <laughs> Meinholz with the two, and the Red Hawks take a 27-16 lead. Now they'll call a charge on LU. Meinholz can eat a uh, caramel chocolate brownie as well, pretty well, pretty fast. He's, he's you should have put him on the stopwatch, let me tell you. Is it like a championship power eater? Oh, man. Or I, 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 it was like, get out of the way, and who needs silverware? <laughs> These are the inside stories that we bring Martin on for. <laughs> Steph, is, this time, will bring it ahead to Meinholz, who just can hammer down the brownie and the basketball. Yeah, you can. Mahone, this time, on the right side. They'll call him on the charge. Yeah. Uh, more times than not, it's 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 not getting the screen set firm before your teammate comes off that uh, ball screen. Kyle Lowitz will bring it in and find Sandell. 27-16, Rippin leading here. Sandell open lane, left hand finish, and one. They got to figure out on defense what Rippin's going to do. Coach Kane is letting his players know it's like, hey, both guys went on on the ball screen. And there was that blow by by Sindel. Sindel will go to the free throw line to shoot the and one. Very smooth, very smooth Sindel. 77% free throw shooter misses that one. Rebound out from DeGuzman, now back over to the left edge. Danowski puts up the shot, no good. Rebound, Tooney comes away with it. Steph is on the run, ahead to Mahone. Move that ball, whoa. Quick first step over the corner. Jorgensen three, got it. Wow, great find by Mahone. Finding the orphan, Jorgensen. He was set and ready. And the most important thing on that play, hit him in the hands. Back out, they'll fire. Shot for three, good. On the other end as well from Lilwitz. And a timeout taken by I want to go back just a second to Mahone down here. Did he you walled see the, up. There you go. Did he wall up beautifully on defense? <laughs> you can't, you, we were both on that same page. You know, you can't do anything about the three-point shot that came as uh, after that. But he took away what it looked like you and I were thinking, here's an open layup. Nobody's in the neighborhood. Mahone rotates over weak side and walled up and didn't bail him out with a silly foul. And the player from Lawrence got away because Tooney came up double guard on the, uh, on the outside shooter, shooter. and kind of left the lane open for him. And Mahone, like you said, walled up right away. I thought, oh boy, here comes the foul, but he kept it clean. Yeah, yeah. Kept it clean, special and, and athlete. There's an, old, there's an old expression, too. That wasn't so much the jump shot, but don't foul the jump shooter. Well, you yep. talked about the patience we've seen not only defensively from him, but offensively for him as well. Coming in six man off the bench today, uh, but able to you know stay patient underneath there, not panic. Uh, we saw you that know, situation amongst them, everybody. He was always coming off the bench averaging 10 points uh, previous season and then this year early on. And then Cade Tackmeyer, the freshman out of Peshtigo, goes down with a nasty ankle sprain who just suited up today for the first time that I'm aware of. And Mahone gets the start. And then so you could see, oh, sometimes careless with the ball, sometimes, you know, unforced turnovers. But so far today... He's, like you said, he's slowing things down. And everything he does is with a purpose. 
Well, that six-man man is always important for any team, right? So yeah, we, yeah. We saw that with the Milwaukee Bucks this past season. I know Jorgensen doesn't want to hear this because he's a good defender and shooter, but boy, what a guy he would be to come off the bench. Right. I mean, when you need offense. Nine-point lean for the Hawks. Mahomes that time loses the dribble. A little bit of pressure put on on the defense by 25, Brandon Danowski. Yeah, get away from that sideline. Crossover, get the ball back to the middle of the court. Danowski to the right side. Finds Young, now back to the middle. Tooney just playing that pressure point on the outside on all the perimeter shots, it looks like, coming through defensively. Vikings will work it back up to the top. 12 on the shot clock. Stop, jump through. Beauty. Basket is up and good. Is that 11? They give it to Fisher? Wow. Yes. Fisher with the basket. Bring it within seven. Red Hawks led by as many as 10. Actually, by as many as 12. Yeah, and that three-point shooting by Lawrence has been a big asset. Tooney spin move. Finish with the right hand this time. No good. Rebounded out. Danowski. 11-11 on the board. 30-23, Red Hawks leading the Vikings. Danowski goes to the right side, floats off the glass, up and good. Boy, that's how you shoot over, over a taller opponent, high off the window, pretty. Steffes will look to Meinholz. The Volk set to come back in, so is Gavati. Mahone will get the screen, back to Tooney in the corner. Around the edge, they'll work. Tooney with nine over to Jorgensen. And a foul call. Uh, I noticed the difference on the hand checking, what they allow at this level. Other than that boys high school game called with Lynn Krause a week ago with Clintonville non-conference, I could not believe the amount of hand checking that was allowed in that game. And uh, I got to get out and see more WIA high school boys basketball to see if that's what is typical or that was atypical. Galati comes in, so does Devalk for the Hawks. Here's the passing to Jorgensen. Droop spin move through the lane, 10 feet. That won't go, hits off the back iron, rebounded out by the Vikings. So the shots that were falling early on for Rippin are coming at a premium now. Look at that stuff. Galati, he'll stop, eight feet, no good, rebounded out. Rippin's doing everything well still, if they're just not falling. Only shooting 75%, LU shooting 72% <laughs> in this ball game. 30-25, Rippin leading. Three on the way, that's good. Like I said, threes are raining for Lawrence. And that's what got him back into this game when they were down double digits early on in the contest. Fisher with that basketball, the Volk on the top side, handoff over to Jorgensen, Galati to the right side, over to the wing. Four, Steph is coming through the middle. He'll step back, push it down to DeVolk. DeVolk had easy work in the first couple of minutes. He'll go up this time and get fouled. He is playing with so much confidence. It makes, it gives such a great dimension to that half-court offense for Coach Kane's Red Hawks. Well, give credit to the Vikings, man. They've come back. They're down by as many as 12 in this game, and now they're within two. That three-point shooting. And, and, and actually, going down the lane line on some, on some nice uh, blow-bys as well. Duvall get the stripe, looking for another point. That one goes up and in. Red Hawks lead. They gave the point to the Vikings on the scoreboard. There we go. Now it's back to the right one. Way to be on your game, Jason. And back in for Lawrence is the big barrel chested, number 35. Second free throw, no good. Here we go the other side, and down with it. Dribbles through the legs, top of the key between the wheels. Go right side of the lane, wide open. Oh, what a pass behind the back. Oh. Shot put up and good. Baskets taken care of and in. Boy, do they move well without the ball. Jake Fisher on that one. Galati this time, 31-30. Rippin leading by one, 9.07. Galati on the ish. Over to Jorgensen. Shot on the way, put up. Steph is no good, gets his own rebound, backs it down. Back up again, that one will roll out. No good either for the Hawks. And there's a lid on the rim right now for the Red Hawks. Vikings with a chance to take their first lead of the game. Sandell leading this Viking team with 22 per ball game. Posts up, shot no good. 
Tooney there on the clear. Jorgensen dribbles through, back out Tooney right side over to Steffes. 31-30, Rippin leading, 825 remaining. Tooney double-team trapped, Pilati in the middle of it. What a pass. DeVault gonna get fouled. Talk about wrap around behind, no look. Galati to Duvall. Mahone will check back in for Rippin at the next break. Duvall will go to the free throw line. He's got nine points today. Two shots on the wing for Duvall. First one misses off the right side edge. Guzman back in for Lawrence, as is 25, Donowski. That uh, no-look pass by Galati in the lane. I said he's strong with the ball, but he's got another thing to his repertoire, and that's some nice-looking passing in, in close, close confines. Second free throw from DeVault. He is through the twining good. 32-30, Red Hawks lead, 8-15 remaining. First half action. Kyle Lewitz check backing for LU. And back over to Sendell, beat the corner, nice move. Turn around, but blocked from DeVolk. Yes, great help. Left side kick, here's DeVolk coming through the middle. He'll go through the underside, push it up. Should have jammed it. Yeah, I, I think he, he was trying not to, yeah, and he yeah, should have. I, I think when he went up, he wasn't sure what, you know, he was at a weird, his body was twisted weird, so he, I, I think that's what pre prevented him. But what an initial great spin move baseline side. Braden Teese checking in for the Hawks at the last break as well. 32, 37, 47 remaining in the first half. Sendal dribble back, hands off, shot three point on the way. That's gonna miss Mahone on the clear. Rippin will run, crossing the 47 foot line, left side kick over to Galati. Duvalk this time, good give and go back out to Jorgensen. Three, no good. That's that's his game, nothing wrong with that. The passing is really crisp by Rippin. Everything is in the hands. Sundell gets the screen and buries that one for the first lead of the ball game for LU. We got a nice setup. Jorgensen couldn't get in front of him because there was the, the Guzman with the screen. Oh, and Sundell trails the play nicely. Tease will hand it back to Galati. Galati got to watch the timeline. Finds Mahone. Mahone will go base. Now bring it back up a wing. Mahone comes off the mid-range jumper, puts up the shot, but he'll get fouled. Which might explain the, the ball short on the iron. And that's what I was just gonna say, because he usually doesn't miss that, that Not shot short. From, you know, anywhere between 10 to 16 feet. Yeah, that, if he misses, good. it's gonna be long. Mahone will step up to the free throw line. Foul will be on number four, Julian DeGuzman, his second personal, team's six. And Rippa got up to that blistering shooting percentage and have really cooled off in the last several minutes. Meinholz checking back in for Rippin. Free throw Mahone, that's good. Ties it up at 33. <laughs> Jake Fisher will come back in for the Vikings. 6.49 remaining first half action. Red Hawks 33, Vikings 33. Pressure now in the backcourt by Rippin. A little token pressure, I wouldn't say anything. Yep. Too exciting. Three point attempt on the way. No good, it's gonna come up short. Rebound, Mahone on the clear. Red Hawks will push. Jorgensen on the catch, left wing. Gets the screen, fires back to Mahone. There's Galati on the wing. He'll come back through the middle. 33, 33, 6, 23 remaining. Tease, back fade good, no. Long on the iron. Interesting five players Coach Kane has out there right now. Really guard oriented, very quick, very athletic. No real big. Right. Danowski puts up the shot, a little bit errant, and he'll get fouled along the way. I think he was just looking for the contact to get that foul. Yeah, you're exactly right. He was the creator. Yeah, the biggest player you got, Tease, the Kimberly High School grad at 6'4", uh, and he's got great feet for a forward. Tease has that perfect basketball 
body with the uh, long sleeve length of the legs, and he can jump. Similar to you. <laughs> Shot on the way. Danowski's no good. <laughs> what are you laughing, Marty? Oh, but man. People, oh, people, man. people know you. Oh, I mean. yeah, that's a problem with a small town. Second toss on the way. Danowski is going to miss that one, too. Oh. Mistake there on the rebound for the Hawks, and now another one comes out. Rippon will get that one. Jorgensen Whoa. will take it away. Rippon got lucky. Yeah, they, they dodged one there. Galati will send it up and find Meinholz. Right side kick to Jorgensen. Good weave around. Hand back. Jorgensen on the trail. Oh, fake to everybody. And the shoelaces. Adios. Well, make a liar out of me with a mid-range jumper, Jorgensen. He could do more than just shoot that three ball. 35-33, 5-35 remaining. Sendell will hand it off, go up, shot, good. That time, 35. Sendell, so crafty with the ball when he draws the double and triple team and then gets it to his open teammate. Kaznikov with the basket. Here's Jorgensen for the three. Look at that, he can hit that too. Oh, man. Last five points, the Fond du Lac kid. 38-35, Rippin leading by three. Five minutes remaining, basket is missed. Rebounded out by Meinholz. He did everything right for Lawrence. Changed the speed of the dribble, just short on the iron. Mahone this time will step back. Steps out. Well, there we go. We've seen that about 100 times. Yeah, yeah. Got a little breathing room now, back up to a five-point lead. And DeVolk will come back in. Strong in the first half of this first half was the Vulcan in the paint. Oh, yeah. That was their identity for sure. Well, we talked about that timeout that Coach Gorn had taken, saying, hey, he needed to come up with a defense that would stop the Vulcan, hold on to Galati as well, and they found a way. Basket put Good up. Good point. Teese will come away with it. Red Hawks on the run. Galati will push. That's going to be a mistake. Picked out of there, Sendell. Now you got to stop ball. We'll call him with the. Once again, Sindel knew exactly what to do. You got your defenders playing, uh, backing up on their heels. You continue with the speed dribble, and you're going to get the call. So foul is going to be on Dominic Galati, his second. Speaking of DeVolk, guess who we're going to see? Free throw is up and good for Sindel. DeVolk will come in. And Galati will check out and Steph is back in and Tees will sit down. And it looks like Julian de Guzman back in for LU. I think we got them all changed. Here's the shot, send down, basket up and good. He's got a quiet 13. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Good ball screen there by the freshman. Steph this over to Jorgensen, thought about that three. Why not? He's, he's feeling it right now. Check that. Sendell's got 15 now. DeVolk will post up. Okay, my travel. Scooted that foot along. Yeah. First mistake he's made today, other than when he went up baseline earlier for a flush or a layup. Missed it. Quality game today by DeVolk. Sendell will walk it up. He'll need Stephis or DeVolk, either one of them. He'll say, nope, going three. Rebounded out into the hands of Stephis, courtesy of LU. Stephis will run it, take it baseline. No, holds up. Chicks back over to Mahone. Yep. Great job by Lawrence in the first half, getting back on D. Jorgensen, here we go. No good. Rebound, jump Mahone coming through. Just the back iron on that Jorgensen step back. Dinowski gets to the right side. Sendell. Underneath the basket, back out to Guzman. Three minutes on the clock, 40-37. Rippin lead wide open in the corner. No good. Mahone will run it out to the line holds. Now over to Jorgensen, quick touch, Steffes. Steffes goes baseline, pulls up four feet, no good. Rebounded out, Donowski. A lot of action, just can't finish. I like the way they're playing, though. As we talked about earlier, both of these teams could miss. Now neither one of them can make. Yep. The odds even out. Sendell give and go underneath and picked out of there by Steffes, and he'll get picked right back. Ball's going to stay with the Red Hawks. Yeah, good job by Steffes. 
you, you run through that gauntlet, that meat grinder, and that's what happens. Griffin shooting now 54%. Uh, oh, starting to come back right. down on earth and still a great shooting percentage from the floor. LU shooting 52%. 14 to 27, Hawks 15 to 28. 227 remaining in this first half. 40-37 lead for Rippon. Mahone, good control, right side. Jorgensen wide open, what vision. Rebounded out. Yeah, it was. Danowski. He'll set up three. Nope. That's gonna, you know, talking about going back to that play, that Mahone kick out on the three because he was, they got all over him. That's part of that maturation was talking about. You know, he might have tried a circus shot uh, six weeks ago, and then he figured, you know what? There's three blue jerseys with me. Someone's got to be open. I think I'd like to see a dribble competition between Mahone, Galati, and Sandell because all of them handle so well, well right? And, and throwing some Steffes in there, yeah, too. Yeah, exactly. 40-37, Red Hawks lead by three, two minutes <laughs> remaining. That would be fun. Steffes on the hand up. No, he'll get it inside. Tooney. Left handed up and finished. Good. What great floor presence by Steffes to find him and then to execute that lob in front of the defense over the defender. I think he was trying to plead his case that he got hacked on the way uh, his way back too, to the roof. You know how it goes with big guys, right? <laughs> Sendell three wind up no good. Rebounded back out, put up Lilwitz. That's tipped around. Tooney will pull. Yeah, great job by Tooney to avoid the foul. Mahone. Jimmy Schenk shot on the way, 17, good. Oh. Red Hawks open this up to the seven oh, point lead. That Jimmy Shake on that crossover dribble, fake crossover, and then rise above the defense is so athletic. Sandell will take it to the rack, put it up. Good. Nope, didn't get it to go. Yeah, it was halfway down. Right side, Jorgensen, uh-oh, 20 foot nine incher, buried it, ouch. 10 point lead, time out. Another good timeout time for Coach Korn, but wow, the Red Hawks, now they hit the baskets, 47-37. A lot of good looks. Basketball's a game of runs. Rippon started it out, and then, this, then it was the baton was passed over to their adversary. Lacrosse came back in with virtue of uh, a lot of threes, a couple nice plays down the lane line, and then uh, Rippon's regained that control. And the combination of players that Coach Kane is using is really entertaining for us to watch, you know? And then the big thing, Big thing is my good friend Dave Johnson just dropped off lunch for us guys. <laughs> you guys are my wingmen. I didn't forget about you. Oh, so the best. Uh, thanks, Dave. So cousin subs. I want to thank Dave Johnson. Uh, he's a perfect gentleman, with the exception of being a Hornhead fan from the Vikings. The guy is perfect. So thank you, Dave Johnson and cousin subs. 47-37. Red Hawks lead this one against the Vikings. Uh, Drew Jorgensen, uh, game changer so far. 11 points for Rippin uh, as well. And 10 points from David DeVolk, 7 from Tooney, 7 from Jalen Mahone, wow. 8 from Dominic Galati. Jeez, right? how's that for balanced scoring? Sundell's got 15 on the other side Jesus. of the window. I love, I'll tell you what, you know, he's on the other team. But Sundell, to watch him operate, it's fun if you are just a pure basketball purist. So the inbounds will come from LU at the baseline. And that's Kyle Lilwitz. My apology today to Red Hawk fans. I actually wore blue and gray today. Wasn't even thinking. So let it slide. We're right down the middle. 47-37, under a minute to go. This time, Elliott Young. Hand off to Fisher. Back to Sandell. Sandell will pick oh, it up. Defense by Steffes. Jorgensen will bring it down the court. Kick it back to Tooney. Tooney will spin it, come through the lane. Look out, here comes the train. Tooney gets it back, up and good. Get out of the way, here I'm a coming. 49-37 and a 12 point lead back for the Hawks who trailed by one. That's a walk. The first mistake and the first time we've seen LU kind of crack, crack a little bit here. Just sometimes, about, I'm right. sorry, I was just going to say, sometimes when you fall behind double digits in, in a hotly contested close game up to this point, you start wanting to hurry everything up, and uh, you make those little unforced errors. DeVolk will inbound and find Steffes. 20 seconds to go here in the first half, 49-37. Steffes. 
no shot clock to worry about. Mahone will come within eight seconds. Jalen. Jalen will step back, one at the buzzer. That'll hit the front of the rim, no good. So, whew. I mean, to think we're only at the half century mark, 49 points by Rippin already, and no, we're not playing Grinnell. Yeah, exactly, 49-37, the Redhawks leading the Vikings. Quick look at the stats for Rippin. Uh, 19 of 33 for 56, 57%. Uh, Three-pointers, six of nine, five of eight from the free throw line. 18 rebounds they've pulled. On the other side of it, Lawrence 14 of 32 for 44%. Three-pointers, seven to 16 for 44%. Free throws, two for five for 40%. And also rebounds, 17 of them so far. We'll take a complete look at all the halftime statistics coming back here in just a little bit. We'll step away, bring you second half action in just a matter of moments. The Red Hawks lead the Vikings 49-37. You're watching Rippin College Men's Basketball on Midwest Conference Television and the Rippin Channel.
Welcome back to Johnson Gillespie Court here at the Wilmore Center on the Ripon College campus as the Ripon College Red Hawks lead the Lawrence University Vikings 49-37. After a little lunch, courtesy of Cousin Subs here in Ripon, we want to thank uh, Dave Johnson out there for that. Let's take a look at those halftime statistics. Uh, first, let's start with the Lawrence Vikings. They are 14 of 32 for 44%. They're 44% uh, behind the arc as well, 7 to 16, and just 40% from the free throw line, uh, 2 of 5. Leading score of 4. The Vikings, big surprise. Brad Sandell, 15 points, 7 points from Jake Fisher. Six from uh, Kyle Lewitz, uh, four from Matthew Kaznikoff, and two from Brandon Donowski. Three in there as well from Elliot Young. In terms of rebounds, 17 rebounds for the Vikings. Four offensive, three, 13 defensive. For the Ripon College Redhawks, they are 19 of 34 for 56%. Behind the arc, 60%, 6 of 10. And 63% from the free throw line, 5 of 8. They are being led by Drew Jorgensen with 11, David DeVolk with 10, Owen Tooney with 9, 8 from Dominic Galati, 7 from Jalen Mahone, and then Ryan Steffes with 2, and Luke Meinholz with 2. So not too bad for the LU Vikings, I should say for the Ripon College Redhawks. Uh, 18 rebounds, they have pulled down 3 offensive and 15 defensive. So just about set to tip the second half off here. Uh, Redhawks were up by 12. Then down by one, able to build that lead back up uh, to 12 once again, and uh, Marty, it should be a good second half. I tell you, I don't know if they've had more balanced scoring this season in the first half of a, of I, a game. I would agree. I, I don't think so. Uh, also impressive is the depth, the depth of the bench that Coach Kane can go to in this Red Hawk ball club. I mean, he just keeps reloading with guys checking into the scoring table, getting ready to take to the floor. He can play easily 10, 10 players, if not more. So after this game, uh, Rippon will head to Lake Forest on Tuesday next week, and uh, then uh, Lawrence will go to at Monmouth. Yeah, and hopefully the women will come. It'll be the, it's been a while, you know, with a lot of these teams where the women's team is okay with COVID uh, protocols and the men's isn't, so they stay back and vice versa. We'll talk about the Lake Forest women's uh, situation with COVID a little bit later. Yeah, I believe uh, Lawrence is actually playing Grinnell today, the women's program, as a makeup game as well. Kind of so, like what Rippon's doing yeah. with Lawrence. Yeah, because Monmouth couldn't come up to Lawrence today and, and Rippon. Tooney with the basketball on the miss from LU. Here are the Red Hawks, DeVault, Tooney, Steffes, Jorgensen, shot put up, DeVault is good. And also Dominic Galati out there. Boy, they're letting them play. The defender was slapping around and slapping around, and DeVault was able to put his shoulder into his chest. Young will look it over to Sendell. Now to the right side. Shot on the way. Three-pointer is no good. And that was 33. Saranchik. Steffes on the run out. Hand back to Jorgensen. Steffens in the right wing. Get the screen. Come through the middle. Middle lane. Good. Here's a guy that basically did not even hunt his shot in the first half. Steffes. 53-37. Biggest lead of the ball game now for the Red Hawks. Sundell at the top. Now he'll go left side of the lane. Good spin move, high float, good. Oh my, was that pretty. They'll put a little bit of pressure in the backcourt against Galati, but hand it off to Tooney and he'll bring it up. Jorgensen that time went to DeVolk, but instead Devo passed it away. DeVolk shot up, was going to do a ball screen, and that's what happened. Sindel looking for another player coming through the middle of the lane, but nobody was there. Now up between the wheels, back to Sindel. 53-39, Rippin leading. Just about two minutes gone here in the second half. Got a switch. Corner shot, three on the way. It's good that time. Elliott Young for three. I was just going to mention, I can't get over. Rippon only had four turnovers in that first half. Seven on the bikes. 53-42, Galani will hand it to Tooney. Dom, free throw line, inside to DeVault. He'll back it in. They got pressure and help that time. Yeah, great double team to steal from DeVault. Shot on the way up and no good. <laughs> Steffes blocked it. Here comes the three from Sendell. Oh. He got it. 
But what a defensive effort without fouling by Steffes, but what a better play by Lawrence. 53-45, Red Hawks lead 17-19, remaining in the ball game. I think Lawrence realized at the start of the second half, trailing double digits, they were going to have to come out and cut into the lead right away. Galati with the wraparound over to the corner. Steph is for three. Got it. Griffin answers the three with their own three. Run. Oh, foot was out, out of bounds. Line. Yeah. Elliot Young stepped out of bounds as he was going through the baseline. Well officiated game, I, I might want to mention today, too. He's I didn't want to jinx us because, you know, I was going to say, boy, there haven't been a whole lot of fouls yeah. called in this one. It's and, been a good play. And yet there's a good rhythm mm -hmm. to the game. Yeah. Steph has bounced past to Tooney. Tooney will go left side of the lane, almost picked off. He'll pack it in there. Left hand finish. Good. Oh, you ain't going to get around the big fella. Boy, and to have that skill set with that size. 11 points for Tooney. Vikings will hand back to Sendell. Good defense by Steffes. Down the middle to work. Step back, shot two is no good from the free throw line from, that was uh, Kaznikov. Look at that. Devalk spin move, he's got to go back and thought Galati was there. Yeah, for a minute I think he thought he was Galati. <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> And get, oh, wait, wait, I'm a 6'9 guy. <laughs> Mahone will check back in. Jorgensen will sit down. But Galati has an ability to really make, put on a different face on the half court offense with his attacking dribble style. 58 45, 15 50 remaining. Sendell. He gets about 25 per, uh, 22 per ball game. He's on his way there. Under nine on the shot clock, three in the corner. That'll hit side of the rim, rebounded out. Rippon will run. Steffes wants to go. Boy, is he running. Ooh, Galati wide open on the right. Nobody saw him. Now they'll find him in the corner. Step up on the three, 20 foot nine inch, no good. Rebounded out. And Danowski and Galati will mix it. Huh, interesting. Sure looked like they were tied up on a, on a, yeah, I can see why DeVolk's a little disappointed with the call. So Luke Meinholz into the ball game for the Red Hawks, and that foul does go on DeVolk. And uh, Mahone enters as Jorgensen takes a break for the Red Hawks. Jake Fisher in for LU. 58-45 Red Hawks. 15-15 remaining. Still man-to-man -man defense. Haven't seen oh. them shift away from that. No. Sindel, good eyes, puts it in there, and DeVolk oh. with a big hand on it. Ahead to Mahone. The human eraser. Mahone, corner. Galati will find Steffes. He'll come through, five feet, good. Smart move by Galati. Instead of forcing a bad three. Saw the extra man wide open, made the pass, contributed to the points. 15 point lead for the Hawks. Intensity's been good on both ends. Yeah. Seven on the shot clock. Lil with spin move. Finish oh, good. Was that pretty? You don't see a hook shot typically from 10 to 11 feet away like that on the baseline. Wow. 60 to 47 Hawks lead. This time DeVault catches underneath. No footer. Try to get it back. Got too far under the rim. Couldn't do anything. Good defense by LU. Danowski will go against Steffes. DeVault got a hand on it, tipped out of there. Yeah, I don't know if he got a hand, but he sure interrupted it. Mahone will go coast, and they'll call foul. Boy, Mahone can go from 60 to zero. Well, I thought for sure there was going to be something magic because Steffes was trailing on the edge over here. Nobody there, and I know Mahone saw it. So 
Yeah. He was just waiting for one more spin, but he got the foul instead. So coming in, uh, Jack Brady, I believe, for, I'd say, uh, no, I should say uh, William Ryan. Yeah, good observation on that. I, I agree. I, I don't think Mahone wanted the whistle. Yeah. Uh, Meinhold step away, no good, rebounded out. Braden Teese into the ball game as well. Sandell with a big step, and he'll get fouled. What? Call him on the arm. Yeah, there was no contact on that play. Teese had to bail out because, or I'm sorry, uh, Sandell had to bail out because he was going to travel, but he went airborne with it. And it. Okay, okay, they're calling it on Mahone. Because at first I thought they were calling it on Steffes, which I knew there was no contact. So that might be might be the right call. All right. First free throw is good, making it 60 to 48, 13-34 remaining. Second toss, good. They're within 11. And Sendell's got a quiet 22, which is his average. Teese will hand off to Mahone. Jalen step back, mid-range, no good. Rebounded out, Sendell. He'll work around Mahone. But he's ready to go, isn't he? Yeah. Offensive. Yeah, call the charge. Okay, he couldn't stop. He's pleading his case. Yeah, well, he's looking at the inside little circle uh, in the paint. Coach Kane talking to Mahone. Julian de Guzman into the ball game now. The pace of this game. Rapid. The, the only question I have about Brad Sindel, you're from Pacific Grove, California. What are you doing in Wisconsin in well, January? I see that Tony play, Playing good basketball. Yeah, he is. All conference selection a few times. Mahone to the right side with the basketball gets the screen from Meinholz. Steffes will find William Ryan. Red Hawks are under 10 on the shot clock. Mahone got a kick one to the side. Meinholz, he'll go on the attack. Good move. And one. Oh, and way to avoid the charge with a running floater. Hey, folks, that's a freshman playing for the Red Hawks with that savvy move. Can I tell you what I thought was going to happen? He was going to step in from 17 feet and take that jumper, but he saw the window and ran. Yeah, once again, the nervousness of the game would force, would make a lot of people do what you just said. I'll just, I'm just going to pull up and shoot the mid-range jumper. But he took it all the way to the rim. Meinholz in the end one good. The old-fashioned three-point play, 63-49. Yeah. Red Hawks lead. The Meinholz move is more what you see from a point guard, not so much from a small forward. Tooney's going to check back in. Meinholz will take a little break. You've been rewarded by a little break. <laughs> Coach Kane's clapping for him, giving him a nice job. <laughs> Oconomowoc Okan High School going, how come he didn't play with us? <laughs> <laughs> Here comes the walk up from Sendell. He'll go to the right side, working against Tooney. Back out, Donowski on the left wing, working against Mahone. Uh oh, De Guzman in the corner for a three, left handed and won't go. I like the way Sendell for his teammates will set the table for them. Mahone will dribble behind the back, spin it through, and he'll get fouled. Push in the back. I think Donowski was looking for a travel there on that back foot. Right. Got a little loose. And but they, uh, did I think not. the officials are thinking maybe the push in the back had something for that loose pivot foot. William Ryan will inbound for the Hawks. Teese back out to Mahone. Mahone, good look inside to Tooney. He'll pack in. Go left, go right, Get go out back of that left. Paint. Mahone wrap around underneath Teese. Throws oh. on the line. Yeah, it must have been. Nice to see Mahone make passes and see the floor like that. It's just going to make him and the team better all the time. Kaznikov back in for the Vikings. They trail 63 49 with 11.56 remaining in the ballgame. Hawks have not led wire to wire, but pretty close. And they're only down by one. 
Sendell will look for the screen and get it now set up. Get set to work against Tooney and he'll pull up for three yeah, from 23 that's, feet. That's just not fair to have Tooney on Sendell on that switch. Ryan will bring it up the court for the Hawks. Mahone. Tipped. It was tipped. No nope. call over and back. Okay. Yeah. So with that kind of pressure defensively going up the going up the passing lane, you as the receiver can't be happy just going up the line. You're gonna have to come to the ball as well. And then if anything, there'll be contact created by the defense, by the defensive player. So Mahone's Mahone, I should say, William Ryan and Tease check out. Jorgensen, Galati, and Steph is back in. Starting five, the floor generals for the Red Hawks. Shot put up, no good. Rebounded out of there by Tooney. 63-52, Red Hawks will push. Steph is right side, back to Jorgensen. Come through, jump stop. Steph is, will wait. Great movement. Jorgensen steps up for the three. That'll miss long. Rebound, LU. Good movement by the ball there. Sandell, arc it good. My goodness. Six points just like that. 63-55. Meinholz will come back in for Rippon. Galati over to Duvall. Jorgensen on the wing will get the screen from Tooney. Come back to the middle. Not find Owen. He'll come in, wrap it around to Duvall. Uh, he had too many options. Around the edge, basket up and good that time. I love, I love the way Lawrence makes themselves available when they move without the ball. Great find, great execution. Jake Fisher with the two. Halfway through the second half, 63-57, Red Hawks lead. Galati loses that one. Knocked from behind. Over to the edge, shot for three, that'll miss. Rebounded out. By Steffes. That would have been huge for LU. Jorgensen's on the right side. Got to get one down to the vault. Yep, they been, got him away from the basket, though. Yeah, been pretty quiet the second half. Because they're not letting them post up as much. The vault missed the jam. Oh. Ball out of bounds. Good luck. Good luck for the Red Hawks, though. Yeah. Right now, Rippin uh, hasn't, hasn't scored in a bit. They did that lull a little bit in the first half as well. But Coach Kane kind of put a gaze into DeVolk and they didn't make eye contact. And then <laughs> DeVolk looked at Coach Kane and Coach Kane looked away. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't going to help you, son. Yep. <laughs> Jorgensen, the release, good. Well. Coach Kane wants a timeout. We'll see how the activity levels there. 30 second timeout, 66 57. Uh, I think they just need that little rhythm break, I think, right now. Just, you know, they got that three off the screen there coming up, and Jorgensen was able to put one in. They just got to focus back up here. Sindel just creates so many mismatches. Uh, and when he does, he exploits it. He's he's shooting that hot three ball right now. I think he's got at least three of them here in the second half. Well, he could chuck from Francis Field here to the south and probably make wow. one in that basket on the north end here. Yeah, and account for the win. Yeah. My, what a what a player. And then when you try to close out on him, he'll just undress you with his uh, penetration dribble. Well, he's got 28, 9 of 17. He's shooting. Yeah. Six of nine behind the arc for Brad Sendell. Four or five from the free throw line. Head in four rebounds and four assists. Yeah, he's carrying the team to say the very least. Won't be the first time. Griffin will come out with some token pressure, it looks like. Stephas Galati, Jorgensen, Meinholz, and Duvalk in for the Hawks. 2-2-1. Two, two, More than token, right? Sundell, another rainmaker. <laughs> Go, man. Just keep giving them the ball, I guess, right? Some teams like to break the press and then run their offense. 66-60. Yeah, Lawrence took advantage of Rippon not getting back completely on the 
The Hawk with it at the top. We'll look at to Meinholz. Over to Galati. Jorgensen comes off the screen. He'll step back. A little too hard. Yep. Vikings will run. Guess who's trailing? Yeah, imagine that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Boy, do not forget about him. Steph is sure as heck did. Sundown will go, look for the contact. Corner shot on the way, put it up. Gets the assist. No. Devolk will rip the rebound and hand it off to Steph as ripping runs. Six point lead for the Hawks. Steph he'll take it all the way to the window and get blocked. Nice defense. They got numbers, and now they're going to call Boy, it. Boy, I don't get that. I thought that was great defense. I think the pressure was getting to the Lawrence player. He tried to put the brakes on, crossed over to his left hand. So that's going to be on Galati. They'll be his third. Jorgensen will come out, but Hone will come in. Lawrence is not going to go away. Kyle Wilwitz inbounds and finds Sendell working against Steffes. Dodowski will come through. Shot for three, no good. Basket is up, rebounded out. Beautiful teamwork tip by Steffes to Galati to Mahone. Set it up on the left side this time. Here comes DeVault. He'll be double teamed. Mahone will step to three. That won't go. Rebounded by the Vikings coming the other way. Been stuck on 66-60 for a while here. 7.39 remaining. Back out pass. Picked off Mike Holtz, but also picked off Danowski. Good feet underneath, and the basket is good. Almost a great play by the freshman. Saranchik with the basket for the Vikings. Within four, Galati will stop. And that'll be a throwaway. Meinholz. Yeah. Mahone could have helped him when he saw where the angle was. Just slide a little bit down on the wing. And you see your teammates in trouble with a dead ball. Come up to the ball if you have to. 66 62, 706, and a timeout taken by Lawrence. Full timeout. What, uh, what Lawrence is doing so well in their half court offense is their ability to break down the defense with their dribble down the lane. And then if they got the shot, fine, but they are kicking it and they're finding the three point shooters. Well, if you uh, had any concerns that they wouldn't be able to match that intensity for the full game, uh, they've been dispelled because they, they certainly can, right? That, you know, I was wondering that about attrition with the smaller roster with Lawrence, but no signs of fatigue at this stage, and we're talking seven minutes remaining. 66-62, both of these teams uh, on the road, I believe, the next time. Rippon will travel to Lake Forest on Tuesday, and then uh, next week... They'll be, uh, Lawrence, I should say, will be at Monmouth. Uh, Rippon will hit the road for three games on the road, the 18th, yeah. the 22nd, and the 23rd. They'll be at Lake Forest, at Grinnell, and at Illinois College. Yep. They're going to be road warriors. Uh, changing gears, Allison Leslie, Midwest Conference Performer of the Week last weekend. In Rippon's two games last week, she led the Red Hawks to victory in those games. Leslie averaged 29 and a half points, four and a half rebounds, one assist while shooting 66% on 19 of 29 from the floor, including 65% on 15 of 23 from the three-point range and converting all six of her free throws. Now, if that wasn't good enough on Tuesday, this last Tuesday, D3Hoops.com was named to the national team of the week. So congratulations to Allison Leslie. Oh, and by the way, against that game at Illinois College, we go today. She set... Uh, uh, school records on most points in a game with 38 and oh and with three pointers she just happened to drop in a mere 10 three pointers yeah when she steps on the floor at IC I don't know what happens because man she does not miss no IC must uh, get all going like oh no <laughs> here <laughs> comes Allison yeah here comes Allison 66 62 655 remaining here's a big three from Sendell oh man boy is that beautiful that with was deep. in his face that was deep 
66 65 that's Steph Curry range what a release he has yeah Galati at the top between the wheels he'll get it down to Tooney one Tooney on with one. a big paw throw back out Steph a step up twine oh he is so reliable reliable defense and offense and consistency with Steph this is what I think of Red Hawks lead by four Sendell here we go again Rainmaker oh man that time didn't go trying to get the flop on the three-point shot coach Korn is pleading the case that there is a foul there picked out of there and now back at it again and now there is a foul how are they gonna call that because I thought Rippon did a great job of getting a hand on the pass and then there was contact and they're gonna call it on Rippon so that's gonna be on uh, Meinholz his first personal he almost had a theft a couple minutes ago down here as well, and it got re-stolen. Crafty guy lays in the weeds. DeVolk will come in for Tooney. Sendell will look it over. Find Donowski. He'll put up a three. My Completely different angle on that shot release, but it went. My, my goodness. It's a one-point game again, Jason. 69-68. LU 14 of 31 behind the arc. That is some great shoot. Steffes. Pack it into the lane, puts up the shot. That won't go for him. Rebounded out. Chance for another lead for Lawrence. Out of the window, Sundell will have to kick it back out. Here's the reload. Young loses the handle. Wow, quick Somehow hands. gets into the hands of yeah. Donowski. And there's picked up. Uh-oh, Meinholz. He had one flush before. Will he get another one? Yes. 71-68. Now you got to get back on defense and match the intensity, right? That doesn't yeah. hurt. Yeah. Now you now you got a big possession here with under five minutes. Almost got another pick, did Meinholz. Underneath. Got to go down low. Sundown will look it back out. Shot for three. That'll be bricked. No that would have been tough because he's picking the pass up off the floor. 71-68. Coach Korn was looking for the foul on his getting slapped down the arm, but officials didn't see it that way. Over to the left edge, Galani. Meinholz kicks back out to Volk. He'll step on the long range. No good. Oh. Coming down to the other side. I'd like to see Duvall get back down where he was at the beginning of the game. Get down there and own that block. Comes to the run through the middle. Shot put up. Basket and one is Holy good. Holy mackerel, Andy. Looked like he was about ready to fall over. Stumble, and it was sweet off the glass. Chance to tie the game with under four. We talked about the uh, the, the fouls called in the game. Uh, you know, been pretty uh, total fouls called against Ripon the entire game. Eleven against Lawrence. Seven. Wow. Efficient. Now we've been in games where we've seen 50 fouls. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it's not like they're not playing defense. Right. They're playing quality defense. Free throws good, 71-71 here, tied up. Meinholz has had a great afternoon of playing ball for the Hawks. Look at him challenging the passing lanes. Salati will get the screen. Yeah, they'll call the charge on him. Came through a little bit rough on that. Bodied up and pushed a little bit more. Yep, they're rewarding good defense. Chance to take the lead. 344, Sendell, who's got 31, 34. With the ball this time. He'll set it up, go to the right side, come back to the middle. Meet four players from the Red Hawks. Kick it out to the edge. Travel. Good defensive pressure. Sendell, I think his jersey number three is appropriate when it comes to shooting threes if we get a full timeout by Coach Kate. 
322 remaining here in the ball game. Let's talk a little bit about Sendell. 34 points so far in this ball game. Just a just a showing by him for sure. Yeah, I, I can't get over. I mean, there is no weakness. There absolutely no weakness with that guy. It looks like he's gonna. He goes into a triple team. You think he's gonna be out of control? He's gonna turn it over. He's gonna charge. And he is cool under pressure, and he still finds a way to kick the ball out when he has no shot. And he does it with regularity. And if you give him an inch, he is going to drop that dime on you for a deep three. And you close out on him, and he's going to undress you with his dribble. And then you close out him in the lane, and then he's going to undress you when the, when the help defense rolls over. Guess, who's, guess who uh, Sindel's going to find? Right. He's going to find his open teammate on the block that the Rippin player had to come to help double him. I'm just... This does not look like a 6-8 and eight team, right? I mean, no. and, and they went tight with UW Oshkosh earlier this yeah, year. Lost and, by only six, right? a, a, a well-ranked ball club. And, and tight against, they went to OT against UW Claire as Claire. well. Yeah, so they, you know, we say quality losses, but it tells you that they're in those games. So don't be, uh, yet they struggled in both uh, Grinnell games and lost both games to Grinnell. Right. Their last game they lost uh, a week ago, 102 to 91 to Grinnell. So that's their three and two record in conference with wins over Beloit, Knox, and Illinois College. Galati will bring it up for the Red Hawks, tied at 71, 315 remaining. Devalk over to Tooney from Jorgensen, hand back to Mahone. Making that defense work double. Devonk will pack in, spin move, fight for it, right hand, good. That's, I mentioned earlier, I wish Devonk would go back to owning the post like he did at the beginning of the game. Go back to your roots. 73-71, <laughs> Rippin leading by two. Sendell with the handoff, Jorgensen will come up to guard. Spin move and the finish, blocked Devonk this time. Great anticipation on the weak side, Devonk. Galati will run it. Timeout. Good call. Meinhold's going to come. I should say Steph is going to come back in. Yeah, here. I think he, it was imperative he gets Stephus in there and then he wants to talk about, well, I don't, I don't know. You got two and a half minutes, a lot of time left on the clock. What Rippin wants to do here. Now, is it the fact that Devolk needed to go back to his roots or he couldn't get back to his roots because defensively the adjustment was made. They were pushing him out. So when Rippon did get him the ball, he was 12 feet from the rim. So they, they, ran, their, they ran their motion, their, their handoff around the top of the circles until they were able to stop and make an entry pass onto the ball side block. And then Devalk did, he took over and did what uh, he's been doing all season. And that's his, his improvement, his, his climb up the ladder from his skill set with the ball, not just scoring, but how he gets himself into position and his footwork really is impressive. Four points the second half for DeVolk, 10 in the first half. So uh, we run down the scoring. We talked about the evenness of it. Yeah. DeVolk with 14, Jorgensen with 14, Steffes with 12, eight points from Dominic Galati, 11 points from Owen Tooney, seven points from Jalen Mahone, seven points from Luke Meinholz. You know, and different guys take turns being heroes on this ball club. You know, Mahone, Mahone with that, uh, uh, la their last game, in fact, I think, I think Mahone dropped in on Grinnell, dropped in 30 on Grinnell. Right, right. Yeah, career high for him. But they haven't gone super deep on the bench. You know, we saw Teese, we saw Mahone, uh, we've seen uh, Meinholz, and we've seen William Ryan for a little bit, but that's it. And I think the chess player known as Ryan Kane, the Red Hawks head coach, I think he's gotten a fill, he's gotten a flavor for what's going on and his and the skill sets of his players and who works best out there given what they're going up against. Nice. All right, set the inbounds. It'll be Owen Tooney near the scorer's table. 20 seconds on the shot clock. And 225 remaining here in the ballgame. Inbounds to Steffes. He'll hand it back to Dom. Galati will go to the right side. Got pressure coming from the edge. Three-pointer step is good. Wow. Galati, the Chicago kid. Great find. Steffes in the corner. Yeah. Dama, sophomore. 
Danowski in a five point lead for the Red Hawks. Over to the edge. Sandell, scoop, good. <laughs> Made that shot a hundred times before, hasn't no he? There is no shot Sandell cannot make. Damn. Galati will get the dribble. Minute and 35 remaining. Put up the shot. No. Great shot by Galati. You know, if you're not going to be faster than the guy, you just change your speeds. You go from medium speed to slow to slower. Stop and pop. I love the hesitation dribble created the contact. So free throws on the way from Dominic Galati. Be his first free throws of the afternoon. Minute 34, you're up by a one possession, three points. These are big shots. Free throw, good. Kalani on that one. And Meinholz will come back in. Yep, you're going to be on defense. Let the big fella sit as we get a timeout by Lawrence. 30 second timeout taken by them. I, 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 that's a good call. I, that's a good timeout to be taken right now. I mean, you got. You got to know what you're coming in. You still got two left. Yeah. So game's on the line uh, at this stage, and uh, you're, you're two possessions down with a minute and a half. So LU has to talk. First of all, he's got he's got the stud of the conference on his team. So with Sindel, so he can pretty much. Do, I, if you're Lawrence, you just keep doing what you've been doing. Yeah. I don't think anything changes. If you if you give Sindel the three, he'll take it. If you come out on him, he's going to do a blow by. Then they'll set the table for his teammates for open threes. He's got two of the teammates that can drop threes on you. Right. You don't have foul situations, so you can pressure up on the backcourt, right? So you don't have to worry about that fact. Uh, you can put that pressure on, and I'm sure we'll see that. So it'll be a two possession game, whether he misses or makes this free throw. The next possession by Lawrence is going to be. Very big for both teams. Just one here on the way. Galani, free throw. That's good. Solid. And Mahone will come in. Galani, a 50% free throw shooter on the season, made them both. I guess it's got to mean something to him. <laughs> <laughs> Danowski across the timeline. Look at the screen. Steffes came through, put his shoulder in. Sandell. Switched it off to Jorgensen. Three in the brain, no good. Rebounded out, Danowski. Picked out of there by Mahone. He tried to do a no look and go all the way to the rim, split the defenders, didn't work. Yeah, Coach Gordon says, hey, you got to put a foul on them. They haven't got it yet. Now a timeout taken by Ryan Kane. A minute remaining here in the ball game. So, like I said, it was still a two-possession game, whether Galati made or missed that last free throw to go up by five. Got a minute left. Rippin has the ball, so you have back out 23 seconds on that, or let's say 20 seconds on that shot clock. You got 40 seconds to play with. It'll be crunch time. It'll be it'll be a nervous time for Lawrence if Rippin comes away with uh, points here. Well, I expect to foul pretty quickly on the inbounds here, right? So it'll be a free throw contest here for the next, you know, minute or so. Yeah. Um, so who does, um, I don't have those stats in front of me, but you know who the good free throw shooters, shooters are. I know Steffes is good. I know that Mahone is good. I know that Drew Jorgensen is good. Those are three good free throw shooters right there. Well, Mahone shoots 90%. Jorgensen shoots 86 per 87%. Luke Meinholz 80%. And what does uh, Ryan Steffes shoot? Uh, Steffes is at 78%. Oh, bench him. Right. <laughs> <laughs> 80, he's almost at 80%. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, that's... Well, remember when he was at New, New Holstein... Uh, High school Steffes went down to Madison, Wisconsin during the state tournament, and he won the uh, shooting competition. Right, correct. The first year they ever did it. I also remember his first home game he ever played as a freshman. The starting point guard for Ripon was out, so his first game starting for Ripon College as a freshman was that point guard position against Lacrosse. Here comes the inbound, Owen Tooney, and they they'll call one it. off the ball. Foul. They're going to call the hold before the inbounds. Yeah. Yep. 
a negative one more to give. Yeah, so there'll be bonus now. Good move. Inbounds goes to the Valk. Oh, there we got the Yeah, top you hand. know you got to foul the Valk. <laughs> he's not, you know, he made his first two free throws, I think. He's not a bad free throw shooter. He's just not the best that's out there for the Red Hawks. Four or six from the free throw line today is to Valk. So David DeVolk will go to the free throw line. He's had a good afternoon, 14 points so far. Uh, and now another timeout, full timeout taken by Coach Korn. First season for him. Yeah. At LU. Yep. Uh, is that how the the uh, rock group Korn, do they spell their name? Yeah, it is, as a matter of fact, yeah. I knew you were up on the hip stuff here and there. I mean, <laughs> they've been around forever, but, you know. I'm impressed, Marty, coming through with the... Now, can you come up with a song title from the group? Absolutely no. not. Okay, yeah. All right. I'm very eclectic. Shoots and ladders. Very eclectic with my music. Freak on a case. leash. I like that name. <laughs> that sounds like someone's down downtown in Madison at one of those dark bars. <laughs> <laughs> Where did we just go on this broadcast? 78, 73, under a minute to go. Hey, before we get out of here, yeah. uh, I want to thank Cole Gregney, our producer and cameraman today for the assistance. He sets all this stuff up, runs all the cords, and puts on a great broadcast. So we thank Yeah, Cole. he does. I. Greg, uh, Gregney is awesome. Yeah, good job. And that's Martin Ernst, I'm Jason Mansmith. We just tuned in on in for the last minute or so. I'm glad to have you along. 78-73, ripping leading. It's going to be a while before we're back here at uh, the Wilmore uh, Center. I, I was checking out the, uh, exactly. Uh, the, January 29th. Yeah. Now we'll have to talk to uh, talk to our executive producer because I see that makeup game with Monmouth back here. Uh, have a high school game across town. Okay. So it's going to be interesting to see how he wants to shuffle that deck. All right. We'll get it figured out. The vault will finally get to the free throw line. Yeah. And the shot on the way, free 15-footer is good. There you go. Huge shot by the huge guy. Mahone into the ball game as Kalani will sit down. These guys are gentlemen, too, let me tell you, when they're over at the house. Free throw number two is good. The ball, special day today. Yeah. Happy for, the, happy for him. It's not over yet, for sure. Runner on the way, Donowski kicks it back out. Three from Lewis, no good. Donowski will run back over to Valk, puts up the shot, blocked. Good job. Walled up, walled up. Yeah. And now a foul called. And first of all, that sequence started with Ryan Steffes coming out of nowhere to take away what looked like was going to be a three-point attempt. And then he was forced to put it on the floor. And then you saw the rest of that play with the big for Rippon, just formed a, a wall. Mahone will go to the free throw line. This should pretty much do it here, if he can drop these. Free throw is no good. So, coming to the other side, the run out from Sindel. There's still life here. Three-pointer wide open in the corner, no good, rebounded. It's gonna go to Rippon as Donowski knocks it out of bounds. Tom will come back in. Mahone will send down quick. Another strong, strong with the ball. And this is good because with full court belly button to belly button pressure, you got Steffes, Jorgensen, and Galati. Very strong with the ball. You can reverse dribble if you have to. Oh, Steffes. Well, his sleeve length on the right <laughs> arm is say. now an inch and a half longer than the left arm. <laughs> Uh, so Stephus will go to the free throw line to shoot. Yeah, Stephus is going, I, 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 no, I'm, I'm, I am not going with you, buddy. Yeah. Well, just shoots a mere 78% from the line. Right, one and one here still, as we're in the bonus. Stephus free throw is good. To make it 81-73. Red Hawks' biggest lead, 16 in this ballgame. Boy, Lawrence made two big charges, one in each half. Yeah. They had a lead once 
At one point, I might have to drive to that game when it's up in Appleton. High finish from Sindel is up and good. 82-75 and a timeout taken by LU. So Rippon will look to improve on the season. 5-0, 6-0. 5 in the Midwest Conference. Okay, that's nine. right. Didn't get the Monmouth game. Yeah, 9-5 and five overall. Women are 6-0. and oh Correct. In Midwest Conference play. Coach mm. Pusilaki has all the uh, proverbial pistons firing with that squad right now. They've stayed pretty healthy. Uh, though I walked into that room before the game the other night, and there were four coaches in her office trying to figure out who was going to be playing and who wasn't going to be playing with the protocols sure. and trying to trying to figure out what their combinations were going to be. So they'll be the women will be at Lake Forest on Tuesday for a 7.30 p.m. tip and then at Grinnell on Saturday for a 3 p.m. tip. I tell you, Lake Forest women last game played was 26 days ago. Wow. Lake Forest has had to postpone five consecutive games and that cannot be easy to get well into your season and put the brakes on because as you know Jason there's no substitution for real game activity versus a scrimmage right. amongst yourselves so uh, that coach has her hands full there so we'll get inbounds here 82-75 Red Hawks lead under 28 seconds to go and by the way, that Lake Forest women's team is pretty good. Here we go. Let's finish this game first. Galati will do the inbounds. He's going to have two in his face. Tooney will be back there. Jorgensen's Let's back see. there. See if we get an up screen. Yep. Here's the up screen from the big fella. Yep. Tooney. And we'll fight that up. And Tooney will go down to the other side. <laughs> will Thomas, the freshman from Lake Forest, Illinois. Speaking of Lake Forest. Here you go. Go mix it up with Tooney. <laughs> <laughs> Serious coach? <laughs> yeah. Tooney will go to the free throw line. First 15-footer is good. Eighty-three, seventy-five, twenty-six point three remaining. What I tell you about this last minute taking? You, you did. I, I might have to dive into your sandwich. Second one is nice. good. Eighty-four, seventy-five. Devalk will come back in. Tooney will take a seat. Tooney's got 13 tonight and one foul. He was uh, Midwest Conference Player of the Week. Sandell, another launch. That won't go. Rebounded out. Meinholz will throw it over to Galati. And I think Lawrence has said, okay, we'll give you this one. It's been fun to play against you. Galati going to get back into the corner a little bit. And we'll hand it off to Jorgensen. And the final score will be the Red Hawks 84, the Vikings 75. Let's take a look, a recap quick as how the game went down for the Ripon College Red Hawks and the Vikings. Bear with me just one second here. Uh, Ripon finishing the game 30 of 56 for 54%, 10 of 17 behind the arc for 59%, and 77% uh, from the free throw line, 14 of 18 for Lawrence. 28 of 65 for 43%, 39% behind the arc. They were 14 of 36. And at the free throw line, 5 of 8 for 62%. Rebounds goes to the Ripon College. Red Hawks, 34 rebounds uh, for the Red Hawks, 32 for LU. Ripon College, 14 turnovers. Lawrence, 13 turnovers in terms of scoring. Let's start first with Lawrence. 38 for Brad Sendell today. Wow. Yeah. Nine from Elliot Young, nine from Jake Fisher, eight from Kyle Lewitz, also five from Brandon Donowski, four from Matthew Kazna Kaznikoff, and two from Aiden Sharanchik. On the other side of it for the Ripon College Redhawks, you talk about even scoring, here we go. Stephis 16, St Stephis 17, I should say. Devalk 16, mm. Jorgensen 14, Tooney 
13. <laughs> 10 from Dominic Galati. 7 from Jalen Mahone. 7 from Luke Meinholz. Wow. How impressive. That's, that's going to be a, a stat with that kind of balance that uh, is going to keep a coaching staff smiling. Yeah. Red Hawks improve with another victory. Yep. And they'll be back in action on Tuesday at Lake Forest. Thank you so much for yeah. joining us. I want to thank our executive producer this afternoon and camera operator Cole Gregney. For Martin Ernster, I'm Jason Mansmith. From the Wilmore Center, the Ripon College Red Hawks knocking off the Lawrence University Vikings 84-75. to 75. Have a great afternoon, everybody.